Shalom, my Hebrews and Hebrews. This is Oilfield Disciple. Welcome to our daily bread reading, um, which will be today, the 17th, 17th day, nation under siege. Um, we will be reading Genesis 17, Matthew 17, Psalms chapter 18, and Proverbs chapter 2. And then immediately following this video, I will uh, make the second video of Hanging with the Prophets. Uh, and so, or we'll be reading Isaiah in the second chapter of Joel. I think Isaiah, man, I'm not sure what chapter. I have to look at my notes. Um, I don't know if I have one of these here. Yes, I do. Ha, check this out. Where's the camera at? If you can see it. Not real good here. It's, a, it's the 2020 quarter, and it has a bat on it. <laughs> uh, my wife brought that to my attention yesterday. Um, nothing to it, probably, but, you know, um, there's all kinds of strange happenings going on around us today. And so, if you're new to my channel, thank you and welcome. Um, what we do is we just read the scriptures um, at times, I'll iterate a few um, interjections of what the Holy Spirit would lead me to to um, expound on. Mainly, we're just learning to read the scriptures like a medicine and get the scriptures in us. And eventually, it will begin to make sense. If you don't understand it, just keep reading. Um, a lot of times, what happens is whenever you read whatever um, chapters you're reading for the day, a lot of times it'll correlate with what you've got going on in your daily life. Um, and it will speak to you um, directly. Um, we've already seen that happen several times already in just the, the 17 days that we've been doing this. Now, I've been doing this reading program, which is actually what we call the 10 Club, for about six and a half, almost seven years now, um, which is three chapters of Old Testament, three new, three Psalms, and then the Proverb. Um, and then I added the prophets about a year ago um, where I read three chapters of the prophets. Um, and so that's really what you're what you're um, getting when you come and we do our daily bread and or hanging with the prophets. Now throughout, um, I make those two videos every day. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and go click on that subscribe channel, that subscribe button, um, click the little bell notification and go up to all. And then you'll get notifications on any time I make new videos. Um, any apparent news that comes out that I find. I've been diligently um, seeking the truth in this um, crisis here in America, the COVID-19. Um, and I'm still, every day, I'm just like, I don't know. Uh, there's something more going on than just a disease or a virus that is plaguing this nation, and, and I know it. So, anyway, let's get to reading our scriptures today. Um, Genesis chapter 17, or Bereshit, which is the Hebrew word for Genesis. Um, Bereshit chapter 17, verse 1. Let me get the camera flipped around. Got y'all pump jack. And some windmills to check out. <clears throat> Better sheet chapter 17 verse 1 says it came to be when Abram was 99 years old that Yahweh appeared to Abram and said to him I am El Shaddai walk before me and be perfect now what's going on and I give my covenant between me and you and shall greatly increase you and Abram fell on his face and Elohim spoke with him saying as for me, look, my covenant is with you, and you shall become a father of many nations. And no longer is your name called Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham, because I shall make your father, I will make you a father of many nations. Some guy just come turned around in my lease. Anyway. And no longer is your name called Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham, because I shall make you a father of many nations. Now, this is going to help me out because I'm constantly saying Abraham instead of Abram. Now, I'll probably go the other way with it. <laughs> Verse 6, And I shall make you exceedingly fruitful and make nations of you, and sovereigns shall come from you. Sovereigns is kings. Sovereign ass will be queens, of course. And I shall make, and, and kings shall come from you. 
Verse 7, And I shall establish my covenant between me and you and your seed after you in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be Elohim to you and your seed after you. Everlasting covenant is forever. Not until Jesus comes back, but forever. And I shall give to you and your seed after you land of your sojournings, all the land of Canaan, as an everlasting possession, and I shall be their Elohim. And Elohim said to Abraham, As for your guard, as for you, guard my covenant, you and your seed after you throughout their generations. This is my covenant, which you guard between me and you and your seed after you. Every male among you is to be circumcised. Okay, throughout your generations, that's that's still forever. This doesn't change. And you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall become a sign of the covenant between me and you. And a son of eight days is circumcised by you, every male in your generations. He who is born in your house or bought with silver from any foreigner who is not of your seed. Now, science has told us today that to be circumcised is um, actually healthy and clean. Um, and the eighth day that we'll come to read and understand that uh, um, the eighth day of a newborn is the perfect peak time for this procedure to be done. And a son of eight days is circumcised by you, every male in your generations. He who is born in your house or bought with silver from any foreigner who is not of your seed. He who is born in your house and he who is bought with your silver has to be circumcised. So, my, so shall my covenant be in your flesh, an everlasting covenant. And an uncircumcised male who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, his life shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. And Elohim said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, do not call her name Sarai, for Sarah is her name. Now Abraham is 99 years old. Now all of a sudden he's called Sarai. He's called his wife Sarai for 99 years, and now God commands him to call her Sarah. Um, that would be fun. It would be like me. Um, I've always called my wife Tabby. Um, being called on to call her only Tabitha now. Verse 16. Just an interesting tidbit. And I shall bless her and also give you a son by her. And I shall bless her and she shall become nations. Sovereigns of people are to be from her. And Abram fell on his face, laughing, and said in his heart, Is a child born to a man who's a hundred years old, or Sarah, who ninety, to bear a child? And Abram said to Abraham said to Elohim, Oh, let Ishmael live before you. And Elohim said, No, Sarah, your wife, is truly bearing you a son, and you shall call his name Yitzhak, which is Isaac, and I shall establish my covenant with him. For an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. I think about that. Um, Abraham laughing at what God just told him. We do the same thing. God will tell us certain things. The Holy Spirit will lead us in, in to certain truths and we laugh. Um, so don't be too hard on old Abraham here. And as for Ishmael, I have heard you. See, I shall bless him and shall make him fruitful and greatly increase him. He is to bring forth twelve princes, and I shall make him a great nation. But my covenant I establish with Yitzhak, or Isaac, from Sarah, whom Sarah is to bear to you at the appointed time next year. And when he had ended speaking with him, Elohim went up from Abraham. And Abraham took Ishmael, his son, and all those born in his house, and all those bought with his silver, every male among them of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin that same day, as Elohim told him. See, we didn't, um, Abraham didn't go, you know what, You know, I kind of need to pray on this a little bit, make sure the Lord really said this. God said it, Abraham went and done it. Now, I'm sure some of his um, servants in the house wasn't real pleased with this. You know, it's like, you're going to do what? You better get that knife away from me, son. Anyway, let I digress. 
And Abram was 99 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And Ishmael, his son, was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. Abraham and his son, Ishmael, were circumcised that same day. And all the men of the house, born in the house, or bought with silver from a foreigner, were circumcised with him. <laughs> That's a day nobody's going to forget, you know? It's like, ah, uh, yeah. You know, and think of Abraham. He had to do it himself. I mean, whew. We'll leave that at that. Let's go to Psalms chapter 18. <clears throat> to Helium chapter 18. I love you, O Yahweh, my strength. Yahweh is my rock, my stronghold, and my deliverer. My El is my rock. I take refuge in him, my shield and the horn of my deliverance, my high tower. I call upon Yahweh, the one to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. The cords of death surround me, and the flocks of Belial made me afraid. The cords of Sheol were all around me. The snares of death were before me. In my distress I call upon Yahweh, and to my Elohim I cried. He heard my voice from his temple, and my cry went before him in his ears. And the earth shook and trembled. Even the foundations of the mountains were troubled, and they shook because he was wroth. Smoke went up from his nostrils and consuming fire from his mouth. Coals were kindled by it, and he bowed, he bowed the heavens and came down. And thick darkness was under his feet, and he rode on a cherubim, and he flew. He flew upon the wings of the wind, and he made darkness his covering. Around him is his booth. Darkness of waters, thick clouds of the skies. From the brightness before him, his thick clouds passed, hail and coals of fire. And Yahweh thundered in the heavens, and the Most High sent forth his voice. Hail and coals of fire, and he sent out his arrows and scattered them, and much lightning, and confused them. And the channels of the waters were seen, and the foundations of the world were uncovered. At your rebuke, O Yahweh, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils, he sent from above, he took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from those hating me. For they were stronger than I. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but Yahweh was my support. This is where we've got to be. This We've got to be where we trust Yahweh. We trust the Lord no matter what's going on around us, that we know that it's going to be all right. Verse 19, And he brought me into a large place. He delivered me. For he delighted in me. Yahweh rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, he repaid me. For I have guarded the ways of Yahweh, and I have not acted wrongly against my Elohim, for all his right rulings are before me. And I did not turn from his laws, and I am perfect before him. I guard myself from the crookedness, and Yahweh repays me according to my righteousness. Again, Instead of looking for the loopholes of why we don't have to do the law no more, why we don't have to do his commands no more, why don't we just look at this is what he commanded and let's do it. Yahweh repays me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands before his eyes. With the loving committed, you show yourself loving committed. With the perfect, you show yourself perfect. With the clean, you show yourself clean. And with the crooked, you show yourself twisted. Huh. Do not the, the crooked and do not the, the vile men and women of the earth um, mock Yahweh, mock his ways. Do not those of the church that call themselves a church, do they not mock his ways? For with the crooked, you show yourself twisted. Hmm. Verse 27, for you save the afflicted people, but bring down those whose eyes are haughty. For you yourself light my lamp. Yahweh, my Elohim, makes my darkness light. For with you I run against a band. And with my Elohim I leap over a wall. The El, his way is perfect. The word of Yahweh is proven. He is a shield to all who take refuge in him. For who is Eloi besides Yahweh? Who is a God besides the Father? 
And who is a rock except for our Elohim? It is El who girds me with strength and makes my way perfect, making my feet like the feet of a deer and sets me on high places, teaching my hands for battle so that my arms shall bend a bow of bronze and you give me the shield of your deliverance. Um, Psalms 144.1 1 says you, he teaches my fingers for, for, war, for battle and my hands he prepares for war. Verse 35, and you give me the shield of your deliverance, and, the, and your right hand supports me. Your lowliness makes me great. You enlarge my step under me, and my feet shall not slip. I pursue my enemies and overtake them. I do not turn back till they are destroyed. I crush them, and they are unable to rise. They fall under my feet. You gird me with the strength for battle, cause my adversaries to bow under me. Cause my adversaries to bow under me and you have made my enemies turn their backs and for those hating me i cut them off they cry but no one's there to save to yahweh but he answers them not i beat them as dust before the wind i empty them out like dirt in the streets you deliver me from the strivings of the people you set me at the head of nations as people i have not known serve me as soon as they hear of me they obey me the foreigners submit to me. The foreigners fade away and come frightened from their strongholds. Yahweh lives and blessed be his rock. Yet been blessed is my rock and exalted is the Elohim of my deliverance. The El who gives vengeance to me. He humbles the people under me. My deliverer from my enemies. You lift me up above those who rise against me. You deliver me from a man of violence. Therefore, I give thanks to you, O Yahweh. Among nations, I sing praise to your name, making great the deliverance of his sovereign and showing loving commitment to his anointed, to Dawid, his seed forever. Mm. Now, if that don't speak volumes to us today, if that doesn't just jump out at you out of the page and become lifelike and give you strength and encouragement, I don't know what will. Maybe CNN. <laughs> what a joke. <clears throat> you know, CNN today, they, they are, uh, boy, they are, they're ramping up their, their, their little lies and their story. Showing pictures of hospitals just overflowing with uh, people lined up to be tested, just overflowing, and the doctors just wore plum out and yada, yada, yada. When there's people going around videoing these large hospitals in, in mega cities, you know, in like New York and Brooklyn and um, St. Louis, um, the hospitals are basically a ghost town, vacant. I don't get it. How people are so gullible falling for this. Uh, I digress. Proverbs chapter 2. My son, if you accept my words and treasure up my commands with you, so that you make your ear attend to wisdom, incline your heart to understanding. For if you cry for discernment, lift up your voice for understanding. That is what we are doing here today. That's what we've been doing for the last should have been for longer than that, but for the last 18 days, I've been praying that the Lord give me discernment to understand truth, to find the truth, and to discern between the lies and the fal falsehoods. Verse 4, if you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasures, who's her? Wisdom. Then you would understand the fear of Yahweh and find the knowledge of Elohim. For Yahweh gives wisdom. Out of his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Out of his mouth. What is his, What is that? That's, that's the words that we're reading on this, on this page today. And he treasures up stability for the straight. A shield to those who walk blamelessly. To watch over the paths of right ruling. And the way of his loving committed ones he guards. Then you would understand righteousness and right ruling and straightness, every good path. For wisdom would enter your heart and knowledge be pleasant to your being. Discretion would guard you. Understanding would watch over you. 
to deliver you from every evil way. From the man who speaks perversities, those who leave the paths of straightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice to do evil. Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer. Oh, sorry, did I say that out loud? They delight in their pers perversities of evil, whose paths are crooked. Now, we just read that those who are crooked will, see, will be twisted. We'll see Yahweh as twisted. And they are perverted in their ways. Yahweh will, Yahweh will compound that to them. To deliver you from the strange woman. Who's the strange woman? The false church today. False religious leaders. To deliver you from the strange woman. From the foreigner who flatters you with her words. False church. Who forsakes the companion of her youth. And has forgotten the covenant of her Elohim. For her house has sunk down to death and her pass to the dead. None going into her does return. Nor do they reach the paths of life. So walk in the way of goodness and guard the paths of righteousness. For the straight shall dwell on the earth and the perfect be left in it. Why well, would be a contradictory compared to uh, today's modern, modern cultural churchianity religiosity of this rapture the straight shall dwell in the earth and the perfect left in it uh oh but the wrong shall be cut off from the earth and the treacherous ones plucked out of it it's partly why i only have 86 subscribers I was moving on pretty good with subscribers until I started speaking against the rapture and then I lost quite a few subscribers. You know what? Hey, if you don't want to hear the truth, by all means, go have your ears tickled. If this frustrates you, absolutely. It frustrated me in the beginning. It still frustrates me today at times. There are things I read in here and I'm like, no, absolutely not. I don't want to do that. But who's Lord? Me or Yahweh? <clears throat> Matityahu chapter 17 or Matthew chapter 17 verse 1 says and after six days Yeshua took Kepha Peter and Jacob which would be James and Johannan John so he took Peter James and John his brother and brought them up on a high mountain by themselves and he was transformed before them and his face shone like the sun and his garments became white as the light and see Moses and Elijah appeared to them talking with them my version says, And Moshe and Eliehu appeared to them, talking with him. And Kepha answered, said to, answering, said to Yeshua, Master, is it good for us to be here? If you wish, let us make here three booths, one for you, one for Moshe, and one for Eliehu. Eliehu. That would be three um, tabernacles. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud overshadowed them and see a voice came out of the cloud saying this is my son the beloved in whom i delight hear him and when the taught ones heard they fell on their face and were much afraid but yeshua came near and touched them and said rise do not be afraid and he lifted up their and they lifted up their eyes they saw no one but yeshua only and as they were coming down from the mountain yeshua commanded them saying do not mention the vision to anyone until the son of Adam is raised from the dead. Now we can take this a little bit um, in our own lives. Sometimes we're given revelation um, through the scriptures. That we need to learn the maturity level of. Hold on to that for a minute. Wait for the right time. Application and um, execution is crucial. When we are teaching and preaching the word of Yahweh. And that only comes with. Um, maturity i know because i've man I've, I've gotten revelation before i jump out there and oh look at this and, and fall flat on my face Just think about that verse 10 and his taught ones asked him saying why then do the scribes say that eliehu has to come first and yeshua answered said to them eliehu is indeed coming first and shall restore all but i say to you that eliehu has already come 
and they did not recognize him, but did to him whatever they wished. In this way, the son of Adam is also about to suffer by them. <clears throat> then the taught ones understood that he had spoken to them about Yohanan, the immerser. And when they came to the crowd, a man came, a man came up to him, kneeling down to him, saying, Master, have compassion on my son, for he is an epileptic and suffers badly. For he often falls into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to your taught ones, but they were unable to heal him. Yeshua answered and said, O oh, generation, unbelieving and perverted, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring him here to me. And Yeshua rebuked the demon, and he came out of him, and the child was healed from that hour. Then the taught ones came to Yeshua by himself and said, Why were we unable to cast him out? And Yeshua said to them, Because of your unbelief. For truly I say to you, if you have belief as a mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, Move from here or to there, and it shall move, and no matter, and no matter shall be impossible for you. But this kind does not go out except through prayer and fasting. Let that be a very good lesson to y'all. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, the seven sons of Sceva and Acts. Yeah, I don't want to give you the wrong chapter, but the seven sons of Sceva tried to cast out that demon. He beat the pants off them dudes, literally. There are certain things that as we begin getting mature in the Lord and mature in the word, um, we need to recognize that certain times we're going to have to give prayer and fasting headship over our lives in order to to fulfill certain certain tasks. Verse 22, And while they were staying in Galilee, Yeshua said to them, The son of Adam is about to be delivered up into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and the third day he'll be raised up. And they were deeply grieved. And when they came in to Capernaum, before I read that, now remember yesterday, Peter's, Peter got rebuked by Yeshua um, when he said this. And, you know, imagine us being rebuked by an elder or a leader for something we say or do. It hurts our feelings and we immediately want to rebel. Let that be a lesson to us as well. We need correction in our lives because sometimes we're just out of order. And we need those men and, we, and men in our lives um, to give us correction at times. Don't mistake correction for um, hateful, hatefulness. Um, one of my old drillers, he used to aggravate me and plump piss me off. When he would when he would give me correction um, because I, I just didn't know how to be humble um, that he was giving me correction for my own good and I've had men under me that I've given correction to and it plain just pissed them off and they think I'm being mean and hateful it's for your own good verse 24 and when they came into Capernaum those who received the double drachma came to Kepha and said, does your teacher not pay the double drachma? That's a tax. He said, yes. And when he came into the house of Yeshua, and when he came into the house, Yeshua spoke to him first saying, what do you think, Shimon, Peter? What do you think, Peter? From whom do the, the sovereigns of the earth take toll or tax? From their own sons or from the strangers? Kepha then said to him, from the strangers, Yeshua said to him, then the sons are exempt. But lest we cause them to stumble, go to the sea, cast in a hook, and take the fish that comes up first. And when you have opened its mouth, you shall find a stater. Take that and give it to them for me and for you. <clears throat> Yo, Peter, go over there, do your little fishing. And that fish you pull out, he's going to have a coin in his mouth. That's what a stater is. Um, 
my note says here it's a coin equivalent to four drachmas. Um, you're going to go catch a fish and he's going to have our taxes for us. Don't worry about it. I got you. <laughs> Does that not ludicrous, y'all? I mean, how come today when we read God's word, things that go against what we've been taught, what we what we think we know in the natural and even the physical and even in the the spiritual. How come sometimes we just don't accept what's being told us from the Lord, from our Master? How come we we go looking for loopholes? Imagine Peter here. He'd be like, no, you know, you really literally don't mean go catch a fish and there's our taxes, right? You you've got to have some sort of um, this has got to be some sort of metaphor, right? Right, Jesus? That's what we do, y'all. It gets so frustrating to see people speak on Facebook and, and out in the world. Just literally no faith. You know, we we seen right there in that chapter, Jesus gets frustrated with them. How long shall I be with you? How long must I show you sign after sign Miracle after miracle, and yet you still don't believe. Yet you still ain't figured this out. But take that two ways. Be encouraged, but yet be frustrated because these are men who walked with Jesus day in and day out. They slept with him. They ate with him. They hung out with him. They was learning, 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 and yet they still had a trouble getting it. Do we think we're any different today? Are we special somehow? Absolutely not. I get it why people don't understand the ways of y'all sometimes. I get it why I don't understand the ways of y'all sometimes. I'm stubborn. Um, I want to go and rest on my own understanding more times than not. And yet so are all of the other men and women who walk the face of the earth today. The difference is, is I am seeking out. You are seeking out the Lord on a daily basis. Most are not. Most are fine with the, the spoon-fed, handheld, regurgitated med rhetoric that's been passed down from father to father. Yesterday, in Joel, Joel says that there will be a time coming when you will not understand because not your fathers or even your grandfathers have ever seen a time like this. We equated it with what's going on today. We have never seen in this culture, in this country, the disaster that is before us. Whether it be an agenda, whether it be a uh, an operation, whatever the case may be, or whether this truly is, a devastating disease that's coming to wipe us out, um, a large number of us. Whatever the case may be, we have never seen this, experienced this in, in, our, in our lives, nor our grandparents or anybody we talk to. There's no precedence for this today. That doesn't mean that this is new under the sun. It just means that this culture has never seen this. This is not new under the sun. There have been nations greater than America go through what we're going through right now in a financial, economical, social, political, spiritual, physical, just crash. Like I said yesterday, we're being bottlenecked into um, a situation where something's got to break and it's going to break big. What will that be? I don't know. I haven't been able to put my finger on it yet. But um, I've this video is getting quite long. I got a lot that is in my mind this morning. And I hope that these scriptures will speak to you the way they speak to me. And they will if you will continually be diligent to daily reading them on your own. You don't have to follow me. But um, just reading these on your own. Now from what we've read so far, this ought to inspire you to go and search this matter out. Search these things out. That will give you another three or four chapters to read. Guarantee it. Um, so, with that said, um, thank y'all for for hanging with me, for for following me. Uh, 
If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, yes, by all means, please go subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up or give me the thumbs down. Um, I'm not opposed to um, rejection. So with that said, y'all be blessed, be encouraged, and always be frustrated in the word. I will catch you on the next reading or on the next ride.